Hi everybody, I'm Elsa B from Sure for Design South Africa. On my YouTube channel, So Stylish with Elsa B, I just enjoy sharing my tips and techniques with you on garment sewing. Now today we are going to be looking at fusible interfacing and the question is, question is to steam or not to steam. Now we have all been told all these years no steam on our fusible interfacing. At once that dry heat, we know we've got to put our iron on the fusible interfacing for 10 to 15 seconds. But you know what? It is still coming off the fabric. It's still peeling as I'm working with it. Um, after maybe one or two washes, I find that it's really pulled away from the fabric. So, of course, I went into one of my sewing books. I do have a lot of sewing books, and this is one of the older books. And it's called Tailoring, a Step-by-Step -step Guide to Creating Beautiful Customized Garments. Now, there's not a lot of information that I can give you on this book because there's no author mentioned on this. All it really says um, is that it's published in 2005, and it was published by Creative Publishing International. So there's no author information, anything on there. But it's got really really great information if you are garments so it is for tailoring but a lot of it we can also apply to our everyday garments that we are going to be sewing now i went off and i tested this i wanted to make sure that it's working i tested it on one of the facings when i was busy with one of my projects and then i decided okay let's test it further i'm going to do different fusible interfacings so that i can see what happens to that fusible interfacing now on here I've worked with, I've got three samples, three different weights of fusible interfacing and I did two. I did one where I steamed it and one where I just used my dry iron without steaming it. Now like I said I've got three different fusible interfacing so I just want to first show you, sorry I'm just trying to grab it here. But I went from really one of my really soft fusible interfacings that I use on my um, very soft fabrics like viscose, my knits, everything like that because it's got a beautiful stretch as well, but it's got a beautiful drape. So I'm just going to show you that drape, a really beautiful drape, so very soft. I went again with a dimension which is just slightly firmer, but again it is a perfect weight for those lighter fabrics. I just love the lighter fusible interfacings. I just wanted to mention it. I'm not a fan of very stiff fusible interfacing. That is fine if I'm doing my jackets or tailoring, but my everyday wear, these are my two go-tos that I use. This one you can see if I hold it like this, there's really um, no drape to it. It's really a firm fusible interfacing. But I went and I tested it on both of them. And the first thing that I realized by doing my samples um, together and actually using the steam method and using the dry method, I just found that I could already feel a difference. When I just pull my finger over the fabric and the fusible interfacing, this part where I've done the steam really feels like it's bonded to my fabric. It feels smoother as if it's really part of the fabric. Where I did my dry heat, when I'm feeling this, it is you can actually feel it standing up from the fabric being a second layer that I've added to the fabric when I pulled it as well it really just pulls away to start doing this one where I've done the steam I really have to get my nail in there to start lifting and pulling it but I can feel by the pull of both this one just peels away this one I've I'm going to damage my fusible interfacing when I'm pulling it away and like I said I did it on all of them and all of them when I felt over it I could really feel this feels like it's part of the fabric this feels like it's sitting on top of the fabric all three of my samples so I thought let me show you this technique that I saw in this book and maybe try it with your fusible interfacing on your next garment that you're sewing and maybe leave a comment for me below tell me what you think of it now I've got my piece of fabric here. This is just a cotton tool that I'm going to be using. And the first step that they tell us what we're going to do, you just heat the fabric where you're going to be putting your fusible interfacing. We want to place the fusible interfacing on a warm fabric. So I'm just busy, and this is my steam iron. Um, so I'm just putting a bit of heat on there and then we are going to go and just place our fusible interfacing. Now the next step is to go and add water with a mister. Now I've just got this little bottle that I use for my misting. And then we're going to put our press cloth. And you can also go and just mist over your press cloth. So 
So this is really, really giving it a lot of steam when I'm working with it. And then when I'm working as well, you've got to press down. You really want it to bond with your fabric. And you are going to do 10 to 15 seconds on a section. It is not a movement where we are ironing. It is pressing. So I'm going to press it. And now I'm just giving it some extra steam. So you can see lots of steam coming out. And I can feel that I'm just pushing it down a little bit. And I'm just giving it a little bit more. So rather, I would say go a little bit longer than too, um, too little time on there. But make sure that you use a press cloth. You don't want that uh, resin coming through onto your iron. You don't want to damage your fabric either. So this is just my silk organza, 100% silk organza that I use. So now we're just going to turn it over. And now I'm not going to be misting it, but I'm just going to put my iron on. I can still steam a little bit. And again, a lot of pressure. So I'm just giving it a burst of steam as well. And then I'm just keeping my iron there so that it just dries it on that area. Let's just go to the second, sec second part of that. And again, 10 to 15 seconds is more than enough. Um, wherever you buy your fusible interfacing, they will be able to give you that information. And then one last thing that I do, I am a firm believer of having my clapper whenever I'm busy pressing. And I'm just going to put my clapper on there because we also want this piece of fabric with the fusible facing on to cool down before I lift it up or away from my ironing board. Let's have a look now at this piece that I've used my facing on. And it's still slightly lukewarm, but it's fine for me to handle it now. Again, when I'm feeling this, and I want you when you do this, please go feel this. You'll feel that it's properly bonded to the fabric. There's no edges wanting to lift. Again, when I'm going to lift it, I've really got to start using my nail to lift it. And I can already see how that resin, and I'm really pulling this. You can see my fabric is distorting. I really want to get this off. Can you see how that glue is sitting there? That resin is sitting there. So this is really bonded properly. This will stay on my fabric. Look when I'm doing this. I just want to show you. Usually with the dry method, I find if I'm doing this, I'm already lifting my fusible interfacing. But this is now, from now on, my way of putting my fusible interfacing onto any of the facings that I'm needing for my garments. So please go try this technique, take your fusible interfacing that you have and again do what I did, do that dry method where we use no steam, then go add steam and go through spritzing it with a little mist bottle and doing it from both sides as well and let me know what you think about this tip. So until our next chat, happy sewing.